Hi there, welcome to TD Cat Tech. I haven't done any videos really in 2024, maybe a couple, but uh, hopefully now we're in 2025, we can uh, get back into this a little bit more anyway. Let's start things off nice and easy by looking at this. It's a box. Right, there we go. Now this is one of these, um, like effectively a Faraday cage. So it's designed to block signals from a uh, car key to uh, stop people relaying the signal uh, back out and then stealing your car without even needing a key. That's the general idea of these. And I was just curious to see whether they worked or not. Uh, this retails at about, I don't know, it's probably about 10 quid or something like that on Amazon. I'll put links in the description. This isn't an advert for the product in any way, shape or form. But what I will say at the start of this video is that this does actually work. I don't know for how long, but it does work. And I'm quite surprised at how well it works. It is. It has got a little quirky thing about it, though, in how you have to use it. And I'm not sure everyone will actually use it that way. So stay tuned for that anyway. Just keep watching because I'll come on to that in a second. The idea of these is you open them up like this and they're lined, as you can see, with just this metal and uh, you just kind of stick your key in here and there we go. So I thought when I bought it that this might actually be a metal box because I kind of think, well, what's going to be a better Faraday cage than a metal box? It doesn't have to be particularly thick, but if I just if you've just got a solid metal box, that's going to do the trick. But it isn't. It's just a it's just a crappy cardboard sort of knickknack box or jewellery box or whatever, lined with this sort of foil stuff. And the problem with that is that this is going to break over time. I just you know this is this is flexible stuff. Every time you open and close this, it's flexing. And I'm just thinking this is going to break. Because the one thing you do see on, on reviews of these is that, yeah, it worked fine for a couple of months and then didn't work anymore. And I'm thinking that just a little seal has broken or some of this stuff's just become a little bit worn and it hasn't, hasn't worked um, as well as it did previously. And it really is that finicky. Right. I'm going to sh prove that this works to you now by using a Rode Wireless Go microphone. And I know some of, the, some of you out there might be saying, oh, but this is uh, 2.4 gigahertz. It's not the same frequency as a key. Most keys like this, I'm not going to do this, in, I'm not going to use my car for this. Most keys like this operate, and think in the UK or Europe, on, a, on around about 433 megahertz, or four, somewhere between 400 and 500 megahertz anyway. So I'm also going to test it with these. These are transmitters, uh, mic, wireless mic packs on 633 megahertz. So not quite the same frequency as the key, but close enough and considerably more powerful. These things, I mean, a key will output something between one milliwatt and 10 milliwatts. These output somewhere in the region of 40, uh, 30 to 40 milliwatts. So these are outputting much more power. So if it can block these, it can block a key. So let's give it a go. You can see that it's connected because you've got channel two here showing and it's showing my voice jump up and down as I'm talking. So I'll tell you what, let's put the transmitter and we'll go for the transmitter because that's obviously the bit, that, that's the part that the key plays, the transmission side. And we're gonna pop this in here like this. So let's close that up. And what do we have? Well, oh, it's, it's there, it's not, it's not perfect. Uh, let's just move the box a little bit further away. And uh, yeah, it's glitchy. It's glitchy, but it is still there. A little bit. There we go. And you can see from that that the signal now has completely gone. So the box is, what, 40 centimetres away from the... Uh, so the transmitter is 40 centimetres away at the moment, and the signal has completely gone. It can't get a lock on that. If I bring the box a little bit closer... It, it does manage to get out, but that's acceptable, right? Because these, again, are going to be a little bit more powerful. So let's give these a try. This is the transmitter. So let's turn that on. So what we can see on here, that's this signal on the left here, that's the RF signal. So you can see that it's, it's like right up to the top now, which is obviously going to be the case because the, uh, the transmitter's right next to it. So I'm going to pop the transmitter into the Faraday cage or into the key box. Don't worry about the fact I'm turning the aerial round and things like that. Doesn't make any difference. So what, what have we got on here now? So already you can see 
that with the two being about 30 centimetres apart, that signal is down to half already. Less than half on the signal metre there on the left-hand side. If I move this further back now, watch that completely drop away. So I'll just put this about a metre away. So this is now a metre away. And our signal has pretty much dropped to nothing, which is fantastic. I mean, again, I stress, yes, the frequencies are slightly different on these, but the signal is much, much higher than it would than you'd be transmitting from a key. And look, the signal is completely gone. So you heard me mention before that people don't necessarily or won't necessarily use these exactly as they need to, because the thing that surprised me the most about these is the fact that if you shut this, right, you've got all this kind of stuff around here and you've got this seal here. Let's just pop that in there, make sure that's tucked away. So you've got that seal there. You think, okay, well, that's going to do, isn't it? That's, I mean, it's shut. It's shut. But the difference between that and that is huge. So if you actually, I mean, this is going to be quite tricky for me to demonstrate here because I haven't got anything. I need to, like, a couple of more pairs of hands here to hold this. But if I'm going to, I'm going to focus on this now. And you can see the signal there. Watch, look at the signal on the left-hand side. Look how high it is. If I push this down, there we go. That's just me pushing it down. I'll put the catch on. And that's the signal dropped right away. So there we go. That's with, the, that's with it pushed down. Let me pop it open. And look how much that signal increases. It doesn't seem unreasonable to think that people might go, yeah, I've got my keys in here. Let's just shut the box. There we go. And that's done. That's not, that is not enough. And that was what really surprised me, because the difference between almost full signal and virtually, like, no signal coming out is that. And that's what worries me about this product, really, is because if that's the kind of margins of error that we have with this device, it's not going to take much for it to fail, is it? It doesn't surprise me that lots of people come back saying, yeah, it worked for a bit, doesn't work after a while. I thought you might find that video interesting. I did. Uh, so, the, so in summary, yes, these products do, do work. Yes, this will absolutely block the signal to your key. And if it doesn't block it absolutely entirely, it will reduce it like to a, to a level that is not going to be a concern unless you, keep your, unless you keep this box by your letterbox and the people who are trying to relay your signal are by your letterbox or some, <laughs> something like that. But, um, but yeah, they do work, but I don't think they're particularly good quality and they're not going to last Thanks for watching. If you've used one of these and you've uh, found it uh, failed over time, do let me know. Or uh, quite the opposite. If you uh, have got one of these and it's lasted you forever, point us to the product and tell us which one's a good one out there. See you next time. Bye.